Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mac and this is my garage. Give me a sec. In the last video we had picked up this 1970 Plymouth Custom Suburban. So a little bit of time has transpired. In that time, I've had some pretty interesting things happen. And I'd like to share them with you. So after using everything that I could to try to get this back together, I checked for leaks and was able to try to dial the motor back in timing wise. But I was finding that it wasn't really having as good of a time with advancing the timing as it did in my truck. So that was kind of making me scratch my head a little bit. And also too is looking back at the first video, the part one, you can audibly hear a little bit of a rattling noise very briefly when I start the motor up after uh, regapping the points and making sure the points gap was correct. And I was thinking it was a timing chain. And well, sure enough, that's exactly what it was. To make a super, super over-exaggerated story short, I drove it around the block after dialing it in. It ran and drove just fine. The alternator was doing its job and all of the accessories were staying on and the headlights were not getting dim while at a stoplight. But I got it back to the garage and just about maybe 500 feet from the garage, it died on me. So I couldn't get it to start up to save my life. It was getting spark and it was getting fuel. It just wouldn't, wouldn't wanna start. And so I finally ended up then tweaking the distributor. I ran over to the garage and grabbed a wrench to then undo the bolt that holds the distributor. Started tweaking the distributor ever so slightly. Finally got it to run and now it was running terribly and lurching around in the engine bay like crazy. Shoved it down into drive, got it in the garage as quickly as I could, put it back into park, and immediately upon doing so, it died again. Then I was working on it for maybe 15, 20 minutes, finally got it to start again, and now this time I heard a crazy loud knock that was coming from the front of the motor. And the distributor, the distributor wasn't moving, that little tick mark to let you know where the timing was at was just shaking back and forth like crazy. So it needs a new timing chain. And we're gonna go ahead and drain the coolant back out the front of the motor, take apart the water pump and the fan. I think I can get by without having to remove the radiator in this car. And we're gonna see what's going on in there and replace the timing chain. So just as a side note, before we take off the lower radiator hose and drain everything out, I do have my little drain pan underneath ready to catch all the coolant and hopefully not spill a single drop, as I always do, of course. But also too, is that I actually took the time to buff out these front fenders here in the hood. There's a lot of orange peel. I think it had a respray one time in its life. A lot of dings and dents and whatnot that you can see and are a lot more visible once you buff over it. But it looks pretty decent over video, so... I still have a lot left to uh, buff on this thing, but I want to try to clean it up as best I can before I take it to the show. Anyway, let's get into this. You're gonna undo the clamp on the lower radiator hose. Now the well that's on this pan, there isn't a lot of depth to it. So if I just took off this hose and left it be, it would just quickly overflow and spill out onto the carpeting. So I'm just gonna very, very slowly kind of let this drain out. Yeah, I'm just trying to be organized with it. There we go. Well, that just about does it. I've removed the lower hose and I gotta get the other one off with the clamp. At least I got a brand new radiator hose on there. And then we're gonna go ahead and take off the alternator and the respective heater hoses and also remove the fan and the belt. And then it's pretty much just a straight shot of undoing the bolts that hold on the water pump and the timing chain cover. At the time of sitting down to edit this video on the computer, I'm currently at 111 subscribers. This is absolutely unbelievable to me. Thank you so much to everyone who subscribed and to the now thousands of people who have viewed the channel. Thank you for your support as I greatly enjoy formatting and putting these videos together. Just to say, part one on this car, if you hadn't watched that video, has been hands down the fastest growing video on the channel. And to think that I just recently passed the 100 subscriber count is still a little hard to fathom. Now just for the removal of the lower radiator hose, makes it a lot easier when the alternator's not there and the fan is gone. Okay. And then on to the respective heater hoses. getting the last two bolts out of the water pump. You can also see on the side here too that somebody actually put a block off plate where the mechanical fuel pump would have been. They've uh, run some different line and it looks like the fuel line's just been messed up a little bit around the carburetor. There's actually a pump, an electric one, that is attached to this janky looking red wire that goes down through the uh, underside of the car. 
Here we go. And there we go. So I've got everything over on the floor on this side and what I've done is I've just taken all the bolts and put them back in their respective place because they're not all the same length. So that just keeps it organized, but I'm definitely gonna have to clean up all of these components. So at some point I was aware that there was an underdash aftermarket AC system. And so there is this little add-on that's a part of the front crank pulley that was there for the AC compressor. So I think it's held on with three little bolts that, that bolt it to the actual crank pulley and then we can get that off. The crank pulley is held in place with six bolts and three of which were retaining the aftermarket pulley. Before undoing the final three bolts, I needed to use the pulley itself as leverage against the rotation of the motor to undo the crank bolt. I had initially tried using the V-tooth belt on the wagon, but in the end it was too thin and couldn't hold tight enough. Thankfully, I remembered that I had a spare serpentine belt in the trunk of my Mustang, and its length and width allowed for enough tension to undo the bolt from the rotation of the motor's bottom end. Basically. If you're like me and do not have any power or pneumatic tools, you can use a rubber belt. Pinching the belt in on itself between two points, the other point being a bolt I put back into the upper timing chain cover, while turning the crank bolt with a breaker bar will provide all the tension needed to undo it. it seems pretty easy when you turn it with the ratchet and then you go to grab it with your fingers and you realize that it's still super, super solid. It's not moving at all. Ouch! That hurt my elbows. But at least it's off. Look at that. Cut into my finger pretty bad. There we go. Back in action. So now I've got a pulley puller to remove the harmonic balancer. And it's kind of shaped like a duck's foot. Just snugging down the two connections to make sure that they're both even and flush. So that it's tight, like so. And then with a ratchet, you're just gonna be tightening the end. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to just use a wrench, an open end. And there it is, just like that. All right, so that was really the last main thing. Now all I have to do is just get the rest of the bolts. I think there's maybe four or six in total that are just on the lower half of the timing chain cover. And then we can just pry it right off and see exactly how that timing chain looks. Okay, the big moment of truth. Here we go. Wow, there it is. Look at all of that gunk and buildup. I'm gonna need a lot more brake cleaner before we reassemble this again. Wow, that is absolutely terrible. If I can just neatly angle you down in there, pardon the camera work here. Look at this play, no good whatsoever. I did read in some of the Dodge forums and Mopar forums specifically on these small blocks. It might be the same for the big blocks, I don't know. But the issue seems to be that these seem to eat up timing chains pretty regularly given the distance actually from the camshaft to the crank sprocket and therefore the chain has to be longer and the chain being longer means that it's more prone to wear and to stretch. So that happened to be the case with this. So just a little bit of brake cleaner and a towel and I'm gonna just be cleaning up the area so I can then find where that mark is that's on this outer end. This is just terrible. Look at this, both sides. Unbelievable. Okay, so bear with me. I'm using the little remote starter that I have. I had to clean off the camshaft sprocket but if you see at the very bottom here, I'll try to angle the light a certain way. It has a little tiny mark that maybe you can see says zero. So that right there is what I had to line up. Crank sprocket, you can see that little indentation there. That's supposed to line up. So you basically wanna get those to both line up before you decide to take off the timing chain. Is you just wanna go ahead and it doesn't matter with this, putting the new one on, we have to be a little bit careful that way we don't bow the chain out in any way, but this one, just slowly work its way off of the, the assembly. So I got it. And should be able to take it off of the sprocket. There we go. And it comes undone. And then I'm gonna grab the other crank sprocket as well. 
And now the timing chain's off. So what I will do is I'll spare you guys watching me clean up all of the components and whatnot, but I may as well show you guys something that I talked about in the last video, but I didn't necessarily get to or take any footage of. I had mentioned that this was actually a two-way tailgate, which was standard with a power rear window. And as slow as it is, might need a little help. And if I fold it one way, it opens like the tailgate of a pickup. And if I fold it the other way, it then opens itself like a door. So pretty neat, just wanted to share that with you while I'm currently cleaning up all of the components and getting ready for the new timing chain. So everything is off, everything is cleaned, and now I just have to do a little bit more cleanup. Here it is, the new timing chain that I got from Napa, coincidentally. And I believe that this one is actually a double roller chain. So there's two sets of teeth on the crank sprocket. And if you look at the side profile of the chain, so this should do the trick. So here is both of the chains, just for comparison before I put the new one in. Just a little Tupperware container, and I can use it just to actually put the chain inside. But I'm gonna pre-soak the chain. So this will work just fine. So I was just working here for a little while, trying to get the seal out and how I ended up doing so was just actually pinching off one of the inner sides. And then that way I was able to then go from the top end, I have this pick here that's on a 90 degree angle, a little L, and was able to just put that in once I caught the lip and then with just a hammer, was able to tap it on down like so. But this other one was kind of bare. So I'm gonna have to clean out this area on the back of the cover some brake clean and a towel. And then this new seal is basically just a press fit. You're doing the same thing. Just with a the rubber mallet, I'll go ahead and tap it on down around the sides. Should be good. So now we also have this gasket that's here. This is on the bottom of the oil pan for the lip for the timing chain cover. You can see on one side that there is kind of a smaller little nub that's right here. And this side is actually larger. And those correspond to actually different sized holes that are on either side. That way you know which direction this is supposed to go on because it is a directional piece. What I'm probably going to do is probably put just a decent amount of that gasket maker, the oil resistance stuff that I got from Permatex, just throughout here. And then once it's on, probably just a little bit more within the little lip here, just for the timing chain cover when it seats down. But you should be able to just put this in and then with pliers, pull through the sides of the holes to secure it. So that's what we're going to do. So we've got the gaskets done in there. Again, I did have to modify these cork ones a bit by just cutting some of the excess off with a razor blade. But I do have the three down in there. What I'm most likely gonna have to do next time is to put those in before I put the timing chain on. You just wanna be very careful that you're not gonna get any of that gasket material on the timing chain itself, or that it would go down and actually get in with the oil. Terrible, terrible thing if it does, probably would immediately clog an oil pump. So just be mindful of that. So unfortunately I didn't actually capture any filming of getting the timing chain cover on, but if I could just give a little bit of advice before you decide to throw a wrench like I was about to, you wanna go ahead and make sure that the bottom bolts, these ones down here on both sides are probably in first. Otherwise you're just gonna be having to constantly push down and try to compress the timing chain cover at the same time. And I actually did have to take it off because I found that the gasket had been tucked inside. You wanna make sure that that lower oil pan gasket, the U-shaped one that we put on, is properly seated and doesn't fold itself down inside of the oil pan. It's no good, so I had to fix that. But we're all set now, getting ready to tighten up the bolts for the lower half, and then we'll start doing gasket maker for the water pump next.
So I may or may not have shot myself in the foot, maybe deciding to do the water pump first instead of the harmonic balancer, but oh well. Just like that. So just tuck that on down in there. Be good to go. I definitely shot myself in the foot doing this. So I just gotta tap it down into place. And then just looking at it, I'm gonna put in the crank bolt first just because it doesn't actually contact the pulley in any way. Hey, I'm getting pretty good at this. Okay, trying to talk as quickly as I can while you look at this boring collage of photos of the prank bully, I ended up finding out that it was warped. I had to wait an entire day pushing up the project even further, and got a buddy of mine to use a hydraulic press and a bearing to press it back down where it was flat. Although, meanwhile, my dad was actually taking some time out of his day to go to the junkyard and look for a new pulley. So, I got another one. Anyway, back to the video. Just gonna have to get this last little piece of the alternator bracketry on, and then I can secure it down and then tighten everything back up. Because it's been a little bit, and I just want to then secure these bolts as I've done with the rest of them. I think I got it to where I can then lift it up, and I should be able to tighten it with the ratchet. Now I'm just essentially tightening the belt, trying to get as much tension on it as I can. And I'm gonna let this set up for a little while, all the gaskets, before I decide to throw coolant back in it, or to even start it up. Okay, so fast forward a couple hours. Okay, or maybe a day or so. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna just try to start it up. I have uh, not really any intention of having it run longer than about a minute or so. There's no coolant in the block for the most part, as well as nothing in the radiator. And I still have to get this upper hose back on. I did end up tweaking the carburetor fuel mixture screws, kind of leaning them out a little bit because I actually pulled all the spark plugs out and each one of them was extremely black and rich, which is probably indicative of why the motor looked the way that it did when we took off the intake and the valve covers in the last video. If you haven't watched part one, go back and do so. We're just gonna go ahead and start it, see if it'll fire, and we'll go from there. Go ahead and turn the fuel pump on. All right, let's see if it'll pop off. There you go. She's a runner, but not very well. Let's get some coolant in this thing. <sighs> All right, so what ended up happening was during the process of me getting the timing chain cover back onto the motor and having to compress it down, I basically had to play a contortionist's version of Twister in order to bend down to pick up my ratchet that I had put on the ground in front of me. And I thought that by just placing the timing chain cover up against the actual side block of the motor, would it hold for two seconds so I could bend down and grab it to then secure the bolt? It didn't, and it ended up face planting directly down into the center area of the radiator. I didn't see it at first, and as soon as I went to go fill up the radiator, it immediately started leaking out of two of the tubes. 
Well, this is all I can do for the night. I'm gonna have to go online and try to order a new radiator, see if I can find one. That's really all I can do. I think that's gonna be it for this video. This will be part two on the 1970 Plymouth Custom Suburban as we count down the days until the Good Guys Car Show and seek to get this vehicle hopefully running and driving, as well as my truck up to the shows. I've never done that before. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it this far in the video, I greatly appreciate it. Please consider subscribing to the channel as it greatly influences my drive to create these videos and edit them as I have an absolute blast doing so. Leave a comment down below telling me what you like about the video, what you like about the car, or what you don't like. Either way, tell me down in the comments. Take care until next time, and hopefully we'll have a new radiator by then.